Welcome to another episode of The Catholic Novel. Today we're going to talk about The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, uh, written by Muriel Spark. Uh, Muriel Spark was a convert to Catholicism, and at least uh, one critic I read thought that one of the characters in the novel is based on Muriel Spark. Not, not the main character, Miss Jean Brody, but uh, one of uh, the girls that Jean Brody uh, taught. Uh, actually, her name is Sandy. Um, Jean Brody is apparently, at least on one level, a terrific teacher. Uh, but in the school she teaches, she doesn't teach the curriculum. She, tr she tries to trick the headmistress that she's doing it. So she tells stories about her, uh, her love relationship. She, she, she loves Mussolini. Uh, she loves Hitler. Uh, and as you begin to see, the, as the novel develops, you begin to see she's a, she really is a fascist, okay? The, the novel takes place in uh, Scotland. And uh, Calvinism, was, you know, was, and I, I'm going to guess still is, a very strong uh, religion, very influential religion in Scotland. Um, and I'm going to come back to that, okay, because I think this book touches on a terrific Catholic mystery. Uh, okay, so what's the, what's the plot? Miss Jean Brody keeps telling this handful of girls, I'm going to say that maybe there's six or seven, that she is spending her life teaching them. She is, she is in her prime, and she is spending her prime teaching these young girls. And uh, when they first get her, and, and she's very dismissive of other students. And as I said, she fakes that she's teaching the curriculum. Uh, the, the, uh, the headmistress would do anything to get rid of her because she knows, she knows she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing, but she can't, she, she, until a certain point in the novel, she can't accomplish that. Uh, so as the novel develops, so you discover Miss Jean Brody does not like Catholics at all. And she actually picks one of the girls to have an affair with one of the teachers who loves, who's, who's married, but is in love with Jean Brody. And uh, what you become aware of is Jean Brody wants to run these young ladies' lives. So one of the central doctr doctrines of John Calvin is predestination. Uh, the Catholic Church does not teach predestination as John Calvin meant it. So my understanding of Calvin's doctrine is God actually picks people who are going to go to heaven. And if you are picked, you're going to go to heaven, you know, no matter what, okay? And if you're not picked, you're not going to go to heaven. And what, ha what you become aware of as you're reading the novel is that Jean Brody is playing God. Uh, she's playing the Calvinist God. She wants to dominate these girls' lives. And it, it works for quite a while until the girls get a little bit more mature, a little bit older, and then at least some of them begin to see through her, okay? Uh, the, the main character is Jean Brody, but another character is this young girl called Sandy. And not part of Jean Brody's plan, she is, Sandy is not the girl whom G, who Jean Brody wants to have an affair with this teacher. She has picked someone else. So when... Sandy gets disillusioned with Jean Brody. She discovers that Jean Brody not only didn't teach the curriculum, you know, was a pain in the neck as far as being a teacher, but she also got involved in politics with one of the girls that caused the girl to go off and get involved in the Spanish uh, Revol Revolutionary War. And Sandy goes and tells that to the headmistress. And the headmistress now has what she needs to get rid of Jean Brody, and she uses it, and Jean Brody is fired. Uh, Jean Brody knows one of her girls has betrayed her, but she doesn't know which one. But Sandy is not, is not under suspicion at all. Um, she, she says, uh, well, first of all, I should say this. A friend of mine analyzed this book in detail, and he said there are 14 flashbacks and 14 flash forwards. Now, thank heaven I did not read that. that I did not know that when I, before I started the book. I, think I, would, I would have said, I don't want to read this. I won't know what's going on. But actually what Spark is doing is, tr is trying to give us a godlike view of, of reality, a godlike view of person and of their freedom. So the flashbacks and the flash forwards give us a sense of providence. And they give us a sense of the Holy Spirit being operative, but not like a Calvinist God determining people. So let me, let me uh, highlight the two mysteries that are in this novel and are also in Catholicism. One, the Holy Spirit is always inspiring us. The Holy Spirit never takes a day off. The Holy Spirit, at this very moment, as I'm talking, the Holy Spirit is operative in my life. As you are watching this show, the Holy Spirit is operative in your life. But 
we never lose our freedom. So if any of us are saved or redeemed and wind up in heaven, it will be because of the Holy Spirit and our free choices. So without the Holy Spirit, none of us will be redeemed, none of us will be saved, and none of us will wind up in heaven. But with the Holy Spirit and our free choices, this can happen. So at, uh, at one point, Gene Brody says something like to, to Sandy, I know you did not betray me. Uh, uh, whoever betrayed me did not have a sense of loyalty. And, and uh, Sandy says something like, loyalty is only due when loyalty is given. So she has, she has really soured on Jean Brody. She has discovered that, how manipulative that she is. Now let me, let me tell you this, as a priest and as a teacher, it's very easy to slip into the uh, really dangerous activity of controlling people's lives. It's very nice to have followers. It's very nice that, that, that somebody thinks you're a great teacher or a great spiritual leader or something. And without, without you even being re realize it, you can, what should be wonderful things you're doing can, can become terrifically self-centered. Uh, uh, I knew a priest who actually bragged about the number of people he had under spiritual direction. You know, which is, to me anyway, a kind of a contradiction, okay? Now, in terms of providence, what happens is this. Uh, after Sandy has the affair with this teacher, now this is years later, she converts to Catholicism. And M Muriel Spark, on her way to becoming a convert, read Newman. And apparently so does Sandy read Newman. So, you, and of course, what Newman's main doctrine is the, the, the development of doctrine, okay? And the novel is pointing toward, I believe, the development of Sandy, that she grows out of, away from, free from, the, uh, the overbearing influence of Jean Brody, okay? So she becomes a Catholic, uh, and we, we, don't, we don't, there's no big dramatic scene about that. We, we learn it as, as we go along. And she enters a very strict convent. And she, uh, she publishes a book um, that is, is considered a really serious work. And it's called The Transfiguration of the Commonplace. And I, th I think that is the key to the novel, okay? Um, first of all, this girl, and go, you know, this girl who is almost promiscuous becomes a Catholic, then becomes a nun, and then uh, talks about the transfiguration of the commonplace, which I would take to mean the presence of the Holy Spirit everywhere, okay? Um, now, she enters a strict convent. Now, apparently, Muriel Spark, you know, never, never questioned her faith in any way, like leaving the church, but she, all her problems and all her difficulties were not solved just by becoming a Catholic. And apparently, this is also true of Sandy, because it says, as when Sandy is in the convent, she, when, she, when people are visiting her, she grabs a hold of these bars that she's behind. Um, I don't know whether they still have those in contemplative convents, but I remember visiting a nun once, and uh, I think there was a sheet before the bar. So you heard, you know, good afternoon, Father. <laughs> you didn't know where she was, okay? So it looks like she's still tense, and she's still got to work things out. So uh, at the end of the novel, and I think this is, puts, puts, uh, puts the reader right on to, you know, what, what this book, novel is about. So I, I'm, I'm going to read the last page. Uh, to, to get this page, you have to read the whole novel. It's a, I think it's a great ending for, for, for the themes that this, this novel deals with. So Sandy is in uh, the convent, and her old classmates visit her from time to time, and inevitably they bring up Miss Jean Brody. Remember when she was in her prime and so on. So at this particular page I want to read, a girl named Eunice, E-U-N-I-C, is visiting her. Eunice, when she came, told Sandy, we were at the Edinburgh Festival last year. I found Miss Brody's grave. I put some flowers on it. I've told my husband all the stories about her, sitting under the, sitting under the elm and all that. He thinks she was marvelous fun, Sandy says. So she was, really, when you think of it, Eunice. Yes, she was, said Eunice, when she was in her prime. Then another girl, Monica, came again, quote, before she died, Monica said, Miss Brody thought it was you who betrayed her. She says this to Sandy. And then Sandy says, it's only possible to betray where loyalty is due, said Sandy. Well, wasn't it due to Miss Jean Brody? Only to a point, said Sandy. And there was that day 
when the inquiring young man came to see Sandy because of her strange book of psychology, quote, The Transfiguration of the Commonplace, which had brought so many visitors that Sandy clutched the bars of her grill more desperately than ever. What were the main influences of your school days, Sister Helen Helena? Were they literary or political or personal? Was it Calvinism? And Sandy, whose name is now Sister Helena of the Transfiguration, Sandy said, there was a Miss Jean Brody in her prime. That is a great ending. In other words, in the mystery of the presence of God and the mystery of human freedom, this woman who was trying to be a, a kind of a Calvinist God, dominating and controlling, the, the Holy Spirit sneaked through and, and called Sandy to a new level of freedom, a new level of maturity, and a, a life commitment. So uh, the novel is human. Uh, by the way, a great movie was made of it, uh, starring Maggie Smith, and Maggie Smith got the Academy Award for it. Um, you know, why this happens, I don't know. They don't depict Sandy uh, as the nun. You know, wh wh why, th why these judgments are made, I don't know. It, it would be a much deeper movie if they had included her and that you know, she wrote this book and so on. But I think it's significant. Her name is Sister Helena of the Transfiguration. She has been transfigured. And in some mysterious way, Miss Jean Brody, for all her faults, inspired this young girl to make a life commitment. So uh, take a look at this novel. I, I'm pretty sure you're going to love it.